Hey everyone, I am super, super excited to be talking about Banishers today. And this is not going to be a formal photo mode review or anything like that. This is me just kind of candidly talking. I'm going through some notes that I've been writing down as I've been playing because I'm just super excited to talk about this. So Banishers was my most anticipated game of 2024. I know, lucky me, I got it right away. And, you know, I wasn't sure because the studio who made this don't nod. They've done Life is Strange, which are praised for their narrative chops. Uh, and they've also done vampire and more recently jusant i've played all of those games i really liked vampire although it was a little jank you know you could tell it was made by a smaller team lower budget um but it had a lot of heart and a lot of great decision making and also before we get started i am doing another giveaway how 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 i'm going to be giving away a copy of banishers all you need to do to enter is be a subscriber and leave a comment saying what your most anticipated game of 2024 is all right right off the bat i want to talk about environment slash design of this game so the game just absolutely oozes atmosphere. And I mean, like, honestly, if my aesthetic was on a Pinterest board, it would pretty much be screenshots of Banishers. I, I just, I love it. I love this woodsy, wooden kind of wool and leathers. And like, the, all the outfits in Banishers are basically the outfits I try and get in other games to look more like that, if that makes sense. Um, but the atmosphere is just amazing. You'll be coming up on these uh, ridges and then you'll be overlooking like a little valley with trees and waterfalls. It is so gorgeous. Like every single frame of this game is, is really breathtaking. They have absolutely nailed the atmosphere and the vibe. I love too the two realms that you have access to. So, um, you know, basically you have the realm of the living and then the realm of the dead that you can access through Antea, your partner. And it's this beautiful, like, fall aesthetic. It's not the typical representation of a ghostly death realm type of thing. You know, it's this beautiful orange leaf filled fall. And I kind of like that narratively because on the one hand, you've got Red, your protagonist, who is alive. And so he is... He is witnessing a forest that is alive. It's green. It's probably in the summer or spring. But then you have Antea, and while the while not all the trees are dead, like you might expect, it's this beautiful fall, and it's sort of like representative of Antea herself. She's hanging on. She's trying to cling to life. She's yet to fall, but she's in that final season of life. I really love that. I also love how seamless you can switch to Antea. It, it kind of has me thinking of Lords of the Fallen when you can go to that other realm. And this is no bash on Lords of the Fallen, but you know you kind of have to do this little animation ritual to get there and. You know, it's a whole different gameplay thing, but I love that at any time you can just click and you can access Antea and what she sees. I think that really works. Um, it's fun to do that, to kind of switch between the realms and see how different things look. Um, yeah, it's, it's really just beautiful. Uh, another thing, the cinematics are spectacular. Like the cinematography in this game is so top notch and I'm not sure why more big budget games can't do this. Like Don't Nod is a much smaller studio than say something like Ubisoft. Those are rookie numbers in this racket. And the cinematic quality of games like Avatar, which I loved, uh, games like Assassin's Creed Valhalla, they don't even hold a candle to this game. I mean, look at some of these shots and they're just, they're so, they're just so cinematic. They, they feel different than usual video games that use the standard like over the shoulder. Now we're talking here. Look at the way they focus on different features of people, the way they change angles. I mean, it's just, it's not just a matter of like, oh, they're switching angles up. It, it feels so relevant to what they're trying to do in the story and the different details that they focus on feel important, not like, hey, we're just gonna randomly switch to this shot. It's it's really, really amazing. Obviously, I'll have a more in-depth photo mode review at some point, but I'll just say now, it's okay. It's not amazing. It's there. Uh, their previous game, Vampire and Jusant, didn't even have a photo mode. So I'm of all the games they decided to include one in, I'm really glad this one got it. Okay, on to music and audio. And, and right off the bat, where is my official soundtrack? You know, I am an absolute fiend for video game music. W where is it? Yeah, the music is really good. And it was composed by the same person who did the Vikings music. If you've ever seen that show or listened to the music, it's really wonderful. And the game is also too. It it just fits the mood. It feels at times very ethereal and sometimes very spooky. Um, yeah, it fits really well. It's beautiful. Um, audio is also just in general very nice. When you're in different parts of the world, the audio 
really sounds quite rich. Like when you're in a cave, you're, you're hearing these water drops and it echo. And even you can hear your character's voice echoing. When you're in the woods, if you just like stop and listen, and I encourage just, just do that. Just stop and listen to the woods. It's really nice. Like there's trees crackling, there's animals in the distance. And, and one thing that I thought was a really nice touch was if you stand still, you know, Red will do some idle animations and he does a little beard scratch and it just sounds so good. Like it, you know, it sounds like he's scratching his beard. I really love the audio design. It, it's, it's pretty fantastic. Voiceovers are also top notch. I mean, particularly the two protagonists, Red and Antea. I mean, the acting is so believable. E even the side characters, just props to whoever was in charge of directing a lot of the voice acting and the mocap because it, it stands out and it is incredibly impressive. Kind of going off of that, I also just, again, want to reiterate how much I like Red and Antea. I think it's pretty hard sometimes to have the player believe that two characters are really close or they have a, a very good relationship. Not many games have done this. I mean, I think God of War does a great job. I think Last of Us does a great job. But Banishers absolutely nails this. And really where a lot of these things can come in are A, when you're walking around, because Antea is, you know, always with you as a ghost, she's constantly talking with you and Red's talking back. And they add in these little like dialogue flavor texts that you can, you know, make a choice in. I always love stuff like that. Really where I think the relationship can build the most are these little campfire talks that they do every once in a while. They'll talk about something in their past or, you know, Antea brings up like, I write to my mom sometimes. And Red was like, oh, I didn't know you wrote to your mom. That's really, really cool stuff that reveals that these two are a communicative couple who like to talk about things and like to be vulnerable with each other. I appreciate that so much. And again, it comes down to the acting because both of them, they, they have such a respect and gentleness towards each other. I just absolutely love it. The last thing I'll talk about a little bit is gameplay, which that was probably the thing I was the most nervous about when seeing the trailers because Vampire the gameplay was a little jank and while in banishers there also is a little bit of jank here and there i gotta say i think they have hit an absolute high note with this game i think they've learned from the people they're inspired by very well because this game feels kind of like a mix of god of war and witcher what i mean by that is the movement and the combat really feels like god of war to me i mean even down to like the way your character breaks into a sprint. That kind of stuff feels very familiar, very good. It has this kind of girthy, weighty combat to it. I, I really like how it feels, and I really like the addition of the uh, the rifle that you get. I think once you get that, that really has the combat singing. Basically, my setup right now is like every time I hit someone with Antea in a ghost form, it automatically reloads my gun. So I have this kind of flow where I'm like, hit, hit, switch to ghost, hit someone, switch back, shoot them, and then it, it just, it, you get in a flow state, and I really, really like that. Another thing, and this is what Don't Not is really quite known for, are the choices, and Vampire did this so well. Making choices, seeing how the world changed because of that. Banishers is so good. Like, all of the choices I've been making so far have been interesting, difficult. The premise as a whole of, like, will you sacrifice people to get your wife back is really fascinating to me as someone who is also married i i'm like what wouldn't i do for my wife i like that kind of setup and that moral discussion it, it's just really fascinating and the choices are very fun and also something i wasn't quite expecting out of this game was it actually has a little bit of from soft dna i mean it really seems like don't nod was like what games are amazing let's try and take some of those things and make our own um and what i mean by a FromSoft thing going on is for one you have three healing potions so that that's a very standard FromSoft kind of mechanic where you've got three potions you can only get them back when you rest at a campfire it's the same in this game I like that kind of resource management like um, and then the other thing which I was so delightfully happy to find out is the looping maps the way FromSoft does it they do that a lot where you'll go off a cliffside pull down a rope and then whoop, you're back where you were 30 minutes ago and then you can you know easily get back in there. I love, love, love that kind of thing. It's so delightful to loop back around to where you've been. And there's a lot of incentive to go back because you get different abilities. So, you know, it has that kind of Metroidvania vibe where you'll get new abilities, you'll go back, access new areas. It's just a lot of fun. Uh, so overall, Ghosts of New Eden, I am 
adoring it. I am having so much fun. As my most anticipated game, uh, like I bought the collector edition. I, I was putting a lot of faith in this game. Yeah, it's just fantastic. Congrats to everyone who worked on that game. They have absolutely killed it pretty much on every front. Uh, if you've been thinking about getting this game, you're not sure, I highly, highly, highly recommend it. If you are a fan of God of War, Witcher, I totally recommend it. it it's a great time. So anyway, reminder, if you uh, want to enter into a giveaway for a PS5 copy of the game, just subscribe, tell me your most anticipated game, and yeah, till next time.